today's video is on uh, index error of the sextant so my previous videos i have uh, discussed the adjustable errors of the sextant and non adjustable errors of the sextant i'll give you the links to that as well and we've discussed parts of the sextant and how to calculate the horizontal angle vertical sextant angle and celestial body altitudes i've also discussed how to read the sextant and uh, this is a video that focuses only on the index error of the sextant so if you are watching uh, and this is the first video that you're watching in this series i recommend you watching the other ones first i'll give you the links to those videos as well with this video because if you're not familiar with uh, the sextant then uh, there's no point watching this video first so make sure that you're familiar with the other videos of the sextant and then you start watching this video all right so that with my that quick disclaimer let me start with this video here so this video is on index error and uh, index error if you define index error it is actually the residual error left in a sextant after all the adjustable errors have been corrected for so of course the non-adjustable errors you can't correct for it and uh, you can only send the sextant ashore for a for a checkup and once they uh, they take care of the non-adjustable errors there might still be an error which they may not have been able to correct the manufacturers and then they send send you back the sextant saying that this is the error that has to be incorporated in the reading of the sextant so index error is basically the that in that residual error left in a sextant after you have corrected for all the adjustable and non-adjustable errors this remaining error has to be applied to your observed sextant angle or the altitude that you observe through the sextant now one thing uh, you must remember that in many books uh, the index error is uh, also called the error of parallelism i personally don't think that is a uh, that is the correct thing because the error of parallelism refers to the error that occurs it's an adjustable error that occurs uh, when the index mirror and the horizon mirror are not parallel to each other uh, index error should not be uh, classified as an error of parallelism index error should be defined as the residual error left in the sextant after all the errors have been corrected for all right so like like i said before if you are not familiar with what is horizon mirror index mirror what are adjustable and non-adjustable errors please watch those videos otherwise you will not be able to understand what's going on in this video all right so if you have to calculate index error there are three ways of determining the index error uh, but in this video i will focus on two ways only because i feel that uh, they are the most accurate uh, where we'll use the sun and the star the sun is of course the most accurate one then the star uh, some books also recommend using the horizon but because i personally don't recommend it uh, because i have uh, observed that when we use the horizon many a times uh, many inaccuracies kind of creep in so i don't recommend using the horizon but if you find it in the books feel free uh, to go through it but i recommend using the sun if possible and uh, then the uh, star the reason people use the horizon is only in cases when you don't have access to the sun because of cloudy skies or because it's rainy or sun and the stars are not visible that is the last alternative but i personally don't like using the horizon all right so i will discuss the sun and the star only so the first one uh, is of course if you measure the diameter of the sun when I mean, while measuring the diameter of the sun is the most accurate way of finding out the index error so i'll show you through animations what i mean so basically when we measure the diameter of the sun we can check the accuracy of our sextant or we can determine uh, how good uh, was our calculation of the index error how we do that is basically in the Norris nautical tables if you are familiar with it and the page number may slightly differ with your one this is normally it stays the same but in page 453 uh, you have the sun's mean semi diameter given to you for different months now this is calculated over a period of years or a number of years and this is like an average you can get the more accurate uh, semi diameter from the nautical almanac of the year uh, right at the bottom of the page for every three days they give you the uh, semi diameter of the sun i'll show you later on what i mean i'll show you i'll show you an extract of a nautical almanac and show you where you can get a more accurate uh, semi mean semi diameter of the sun but overall you can see that the semi diameter of sun if you go through those values you can see at an average it's about 16 16.1 that's the minutes it's minutes right uh, so the diameter of the sun becomes in about 32 minutes so about 16 minutes is the mean semi diameter that is half a diameter then the full diameter will become twice of 16 that's about 32 minutes so this we can use this information to calculate our sextant error let me show you how all right so the exact diameter of the sun need not be known but it is useful to know that it is approximately 32 minutes 
and I've just discussed all this so we'll move on so what you basically do when you're calculating the index error using the diameter of the Sun you put your sextant uh, vertically you hold the section vertically not put the section but hold the section vertically and uh, at zero degrees and zero minutes all right and then use these shades appropriately if the Sun is too bright try to use the morning Sun when it's not so bright uh, because the number of shades you use on the section should be minimum and then observe the Sun and uh, you can utilize the sextant to measure the diameter of the sun. So we first measure it in one direction. So basically what you are doing here is that uh, while looking at the sun, you will rotate the micrometer of the sun sextant first on the arc and then off the arc or first off the arc or on the arc doesn't matter but you have to get two readings. So firstly, you can use the sextant while observing the sun when you rotate the micrometer what you see moving upwards, the green colored sun, is actually the reflected sun. And that's just an image, it's not the actual sun. The actual sun you can't move, right? The actual sun stays where it is. But when you look through this extent, and you can try this if you have a sextant, and when you start moving the micrometer from 0 degrees 0 minutes, you will see the reflected image of the sun slowly moving. It will move upwards with the on the arc or off, downwards with on the arc or off the arc, it will move upwards. Try it out. So you go first on the arc, when I say on the arc, you go towards, move the micrometer towards the graduations with the higher number of graduations and off the arc is from zero when you go towards the direction which has lesser number of graduations, that's off the arc, right? So rotate the micrometer in one direction first, make sure the sun, the reflected image goes up when the two images are touching one another, that is the lower limb of one is touching the upper limb of the other, note down the reading of the sextant. If it's on the arc, note down on the arc, then move the image in the opposite direction. And this could be an off the arc as well. So note down the reading of off the arc. Remember, when it comes to off the arc, whatever you see on the sextant, the minutes, you have to subtract it from 60 to get the actual reading. Uh, you will learn all this if you watch my video on reading the sextant. So on the arc reading is noted the way it is. But for off the arc reading, you have to, uh, whatever you see on the sextant, you have to take it off 60 to get the actual reading. So move the sun in such a way that you get one reading of on the arc and one reading of off the arc by moving the reflected image of the sun first upwards and then downwards. You stop when the two images are just touching one another. That is the lower limb of this. In this case, the lower limb of the true sun is touching the upper limb of the reflected sun. Stop here, note down the two readings. Alright, if there is no error in your sextant, then both the readings will exactly be the same. So there is no difference, it will be zero. However, if there is a difference, so the other way around is that uh, if there is a difference, there is an index error, and I'll show you how to calculate the index error by getting using these two readings. Then the another method Another way that you can calculate the index error by using the sun is what people, some people do is they set the sextant first at 32 minutes of the arc. So the reflected image goes up beforehand. And then what they do is they slowly adjust the micrometer in a way that the reflected image and the true sun start to touch one another. Alright? Uh, so you set it pre, pre-hand on 32 minutes of the arc. And then you observe if the two images are not touching one another, then you slowly adjust the micrometer till they start to touch one another. Alright, so if you can see here, just when it touches it, you can note on the reading. Alright, you do the same for on the arc. So you put 32 minutes on the arc on your sextant, and if the images are not touching one another, just adjust the sextant in such a way that the images start to touch. So although you will start off with 32 minutes on the arc or 32 minutes off the arc, you will end up with a different reading. So in this case, you may have ended up with 27 minutes on the arc, although you started off with 32 minutes on the arc, because when you put it at 32 minutes on the arc, the two images of the sun were not touching one another. So you adjusted it till the time you got the reading, which may be different from 32 minutes. Now remember, these both these methods are correct. So when you're using the sun to calculate the index error, either you can start off from 0 degrees 0 minutes 
and move the micrometer till the images touch or you can preset the sextant on 32 minutes on the arc or off the arc and then adjust it till they touch one another and then get two readings it's the same thing all right once you get those two readings then you can do a calculation to calculate the index error so basically what you do is you can subtract the smaller from the bigger number in this example of course the bigger number was off the arc 36 minutes and on the arc was 27 minutes so you subtracted the smaller from the bigger number and you divide it by 2 so in this case you can see 36 minutes minus 27 minutes is 9 minutes divided by 2 is 4.5 minutes and whichever is the bigger value the index error takes that name so in this case 36 minutes off the arc was the bigger value so the index error took its name of off the arc so if the on the arc value would have been bigger then the index error resulting index error would have been on the arc and then I'll show you towards the end of the video how do you apply this index error to your section altitude. Alright, now how do I know the accuracy of these readings are accurate? Or it's it's reliable? How, how, how do I know that the accuracy of these readings are reliable? So you can do a check. It's like a self-check using the semi-diameter value of the sun given to you in the nautical almanac. So of course you have to remember that if there is no error in the section, these two results will exactly be the same and you will get a zero. So index error would be zero. So what you would get is 36 minutes off the arc minus 36 minutes on the arc or something like that or 27 minutes off the arc and 27 minutes on the arc the resultant would be zero if the sextant had no index error this is rarely the case there is always a slight error in the sextant or that is what has been in my experience your experience may be different all right now again this is a this is a different example again this one is showing that i have actually subtracted i am always subtracting on the arc from off the arc well don't get confused with that uh, you always you can take the bigger number and then subtract the smaller number from it and then whichever is the bigger number you name the index error accordingly all right now why this method works here is because uh, and you must be wondering that why am i showing you this method this method is also there in many books what happens with this method is that uh, whenever off the arc is a bigger number you get the index error as a positive number and uh, it's off the arc now what happens is then you can apply the index error directly because off the arc index errors are added to the section altitudes whereas on the arc index errors are subtracted so why this method works is because to, uh, with this example you can see example 2 on the arc value is bigger and uh, because you are subtracting the bigger number from the smaller number the resulting index error is a negative number and this works very well is because you can straight away take this negative number and apply to the section altitude because on the arc index errors are always subtracted from the section altitude so that is why this method works as well but if you think this is confusing then always just use subtract the smaller number from the bigger number and then whichever is the bigger number name your index error accordingly all right now how do i know these uh, readings are accurate or not so you can do a self check by uh, comparing the values or the sum of these values divided by 4 with the semi diameter of the sun so i'll show you what i mean so basically before remember before I told you that you can get the semi diameter value of the sun from the nautical almanac. So for every three days you get a semi diameter value of the sun at the bottom of the nautical almanac page. So let me highlight what I mean. So you can see here if I focus on the nautical almanac page the semi diameter of the sun is found on the lower left side of the daily pages table. So I will focus here. This is where it is. So ST stands for semi diameter. So this is right below the sun's column. This semi diameter holds good for the three days. In this case, May 10th, 11th, and 12th. What you now do is remember the readings that you obtained in the first example. To check the accuracy of these readings, just add the two readings and then divide it by four. So in this case, add 36 minutes to 27 minutes divided by four. 63 divided by four will give you 15.75 the semi diameter of the sun that you obtained from the almanac just on the previous page here was 15.9 compare the two values if the difference between the true and the observed semi diameter is less than or equal to 0.3 within the range then it is good so since in the semi diameter of the true semi diameter of the sun based on the almanac is 15.9 and the one that you calculated based on your readings was 15.75 it is less than the true semi diameter of the sun by an amount of 0.15 when you subtract 15.9 minus 15.75 since it is less than or equal to 
the true diameter of the sun this is good enough so what this means is that the, if the true semi diameter of the sun was 15.9 your observed semi diameter of the sun should have been in the range of 15.6 to 15.9 that is that is what it means by equal to or less than it could not have been more than 15.9 if it was more than 15.9 the observed semi diameter then it would be inaccurate so it has to be less than by an amount of 0.9 or equal to all right so if you didn't understand this part uh, please write to me in the comments i can explain again so in this case i'll repeat myself because the semi diameter of the sun is 15.9 your observed semi diameter of the sun that you get based on the addition of the values and divide division by 4 should lie between a range of 15.6 to 15.9 so 0.3 less than the true semi diameter of the sun if it is within that range it will be a good reading all right so in this case of course the example or the observation was good because it lied within the range of 0.3 less than the true semi diameter of the sun you can also use the index error or find the index error using the stars the method is still the same you go up or you go down by setting the index arm to 0 degree 0 minutes use the reflected image of the star take it up take it down just like we showed you before when it starts to touch and again this is why the sun is the most accurate because you can clearly see when the two limbs are touching with the star it's a little bit of a individual interpretation so that's why people use the star or the horizon only when the sun is not available otherwise the method remains the same you basically have to make the two stars touch one another once by going downwards and once by taking the reflected image upwards Alright, once you get the two readings, do what you did before, subtract it and divide it by 2. Alright. Now once you get the index error, what do you do and how do you apply for it? So if you have watched all my other videos on sextant altitude calculation, you will know this already because it's pretty simple. So once you get your sextant altitude by taking a site, you can apply your index error once you apply your index error if it's on the arc you will subtract it so in this case your observed altitude then becomes corrected to 65 degrees 17.38 so whenever it's on the arc you will take it off that means you will subtract it one thing i'll tell you in this context here what you see as written as observed altitude that's because I want you to know that this is the altitude you observe through the sextant. But if you look at the, the sextant altitude calculations, you will see that the altitude is referred as sextant altitude. And then when you apply the index error, it's called observed altitude. So after applying the index error to the sextant altitude, you get observed altitude. But in this case, I have written it as observed altitude so that you know that this is the altitude you obtain by observing through the sextant. Alright, so anyhow, whenever you get index error on the arc, you take it off, so you'll subtract it. And similarly, if it's off the arc, you will add the sextant error. Or you will add the index error. So in this case, because it's off the arc, 0.1 of a minute, I will add it. So when it's off, you can put it on. This is how some of the students remember it. This is like a rule of thumb. So the final altitude that you get, or the corrected altitude you get, is 65 degrees 17.58 minutes. Alright, so this video was focusing on index error and how to apply it, how to calculate it. Hope it was simple for you to understand. If you have any questions, please feel free to write to me in the comment section. Thanks guys and I'll see you soon.